I'm Gabby Larson and I'm here with Bemis School of Art and I'm going to be doing a mini drawing class with you guys today. Uh, I will be using colored pencils and markers so if you have those laying around your house could grab some and drawing paper. I will be using Strathmore 80 pound drawing paper. You can use whatever you have at home but I'm just going to tell you what I'm using. Uh, I'm using Blick Studio markers and Copic markers and I'm using Rembrandt Faber-Castell and Prismacolor pencils. So feel free to use whatever you have lying around at your house, uh, but that's what I'm using. I also wanna talk a little bit about paper. If you want a textured paper, like you're doing an ocean scene or you're doing craggy rocks, you might want a textured paper. And so I would recommend a cold pressed watercolor paper with some tooth or texture. Uh, and I'm going to show you a little bit how that works. So you can see that texture coming through the paper when you're using this. Um, so if you want that kind of white coming through, then you want a heavy tube paper. And I'm going to do a little underpainting here to show you how you can layer that. So this is good for kind of rough sketches or watercolor scenes. Uh, but I want to use a smooth paper because I'm doing a koi fish and it's gonna be tranquil and smooth and pretty. So that's the paper I'm using. I will also be using an HB or basically a number two pencil to draw out my fish. Normally I would not do that, I would use a colored pencil that was very light, close to the color of the paper, because colored pe pencil is very difficult to erase, and so I want to be able to cover it. But the uh, carbon in the pencils doesn't mix well with the colored pencil, the wax in the colored pencil, and it uh, smears everything all over the place. So you want to use, you're going to want to erase all the lines before you put colored pencil on your drawing. Okay. So what I'm gonna do first to start out my, my koi fish is I'm gonna draw an oval here. And, and you don't have to make it a perfect oval. You can have it kind of a loose oval. So don't worry about it being perfect. You're just kind of getting the, the turn of your fish. And now down here, you're gonna do like a little circly oval down here also. Okay. So, and then you're gonna wanna do this kind of a line through your two ovals to the fish body. Now on this side of the line, we're gonna do face, and over here, this side of the face. And we're gonna come this way and connect with that little oval down here, and kind of do a swishy fish tail down there. I'm gonna do, connect it up here also, with a swishy fish tail. Now, halfway through this, this thing here, this oval, we're gonna put some little fins. And this fish is leaning slightly, so we're seeing more, mostly at this side. So this fin is a little hidden over here. And we're gonna put some fins down here also. Again, this one's a little more hidden, you just can't see it. And then we're gonna put an eyeball on this side. Now when you're drawing the eyeball, they're normally round if you're looking straight at them, but because we're kind of looking down on it, it's foreshortened. And so the bottom turns kind of flat. So you got kind of an overly flat eye there. And then you're gonna put a nostril here and this nostril is kind of hanging off over here. And then because it's a koi fish, we're gonna give it this little square mouth with some whiskers over here. And this eye is kind of hidden because we're gonna make him coming from this side. Okay, so now that you have your basic drawing down, I'm gonna use an underpainting with markers. And first, I'm gonna go around my fish with this blue marker. Now I'm gonna be using blue and orange because those are complementary colors. And I want this fish to really pop. You can make your fish whatever color you want. You can make the water whatever color you want. So, 
because the fish is going to be a lot of white, I don't actually want my underpainting under the fish. Lines will have to be perfect when you're doing this underpainting because you're going to cover it with colored pencil. But it's much easier to use colored pencil over watercolor because you don't want that white to show through. And if you're using a similar color background, it just doesn't waste so much of your colored pencil and it's a lot less time to. So you can go all the way to the edges with your blue. I'm just going to go to there. And then I am going to use this peach color because I want to do orange. I want to go a little bit lighter with my marker than the actual color of my pencils. So I'm going to put some patchy kind of fun little spots here for this little fish to have. So let's do something over here. Kind of do loose little scribbles on your fish so that he's and then as soon as you get to the lines you like you color them in and he's got a little fin that comes through here so i don't want to get too close to that line because he's got that white fin right through that that section there so let me see So then I want to use, you can use a gray color pencil or a darker color pencil and just kind of put that eye line there and just very slightly the nostrils in because I want to erase most of these. That I've got that in. I'm going to use this pink eraser. And I'm going to erase my pencil lines. So I don't mess with the colored pencil. Alright, so now that they, I've got the fish kind of the way I want, I want to put some shadows, and I'm using a light blue Copic marker. I'm going to use a little paintbrush side. You don't have to do this, but again, it just adds a little more depth into the side of the fish here. Just give it some shadow over there so I don't have to do all of that work with color pencil. Put a little bit of shadow on the side too to give it the wings. And then right here is that dorsal fin, so it's going to have a little bit of shadow. There is the basic part. Now we're going to start blocking the fish in a little better. of this 
blue pencil. This is a True Blue, it's called. This is True Blue from Prismacolor. you're using colored pencil and you want to cover a lot of surface area, you can flip it like this and just go like that and it covers a lot. But you got to be careful with these lines because it will hard to control your lines when you're doing that. Okay, so you can also flip it this way the way you would hold a paintbrush or pencils, not like this, kind of out, out this way and go back and forth. Now, if you're worried about streaky lines, you can do this stroke here, and it's called scumbling, and it's very well used with colored pencil because it's really pretty. Okay, so I pulled the cheek out a little bit over here with the white, and I want to show you a technique to blend the background so that you don't get any paper showing through. You just use a Q-tip with rubbing alcohol and you can come in here and just blend that away, your strokes away. And so you don't have any background you can buy um, pens that do the same thing, but it's much more expensive, and so might, might as well just use the bottle and a Q-tip or a paintbrush. Like, just get that out. Put some shadows in there with a darker color, like the fish pop. Now I'm changing his little spots up here because I think it'll look better more spot up here. And I'm going to color these spots in with the egg. layering on top of layering so don't be afraid to switch colors and grab a new color and throw that on this here is a prismacolor stick if you want to throw color down faster you can do that with these sticks Alrighty, well there we have it, a little sketch of a koi fish in colored pencil. There it is. Hope you enjoyed. Use any color you want. Have fun. Explore. Okay, thanks. Bye.